By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is Tuesday again, and that means we are going to the dark. Timmy goes dark, the tournament. I am playing my third match in the group stages, and this time I'm playing against Steven. And he is bringing a pretty cool deck to the table. Um, it's called Fires in the Dark, and it's got four mana clashes. In case you don't know what mana clash is, stick with me until the deck tech, because I'm going to give you all the info about mana clash and his crazy mono red damage deck that he's built. Um, of course, I am still playing with my uh, blue and red deck that I've called the Ghost Family, so also a short deck tech on that. Now, um, if you'd like to skip the deck tech section and you want to go straight to the action, you want to see how I'm going to do in my third group match, you can do that by checking the description below. There you'll find several timestamps. One of them is MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the actual game. Um, for here, I'm going to continue with the deck techs and I'm actually going to start with the deck of my opponent, Steven. So let's look at his deck, Fires in the Dark. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Fires in the Dark by Steven. And I really like these decks where players, they choose something and they just go for it 100%. And in this case, you can see Steven has said, you know, I want to make the most badass burn deck with the dark cards possible. And that's exactly what he did, in my opinion. And there are just some really, really interesting cards in here. The first card that I want to highlight uh, is Mana Clash. Now, Mana Clash will be played in this game, and you can see that Steven is playing with four of them. And his play style is, style is if I can hurt you, I'm going to hurt you. I don't care if I hurt myself. I'm a burnt player. I'm a chaos player. I'm going to do it. And I really like that attitude. If your attitude and the cards you play kind of go hand in hand. So Mana Clash, here we see it up the screen. It's one red to cast for a sorcery, of course, from the dark, because this is a the dark constructed tournament. And it reads, you and target player each flip a coin. Mana Clash does one damage to any player whose coin comes up tails. Repeat this process until both players' coins come up heads at the same time. Now, I believe in this matchup, we've chosen to use a six-sided die to represent the coin flipping. And I think odds or damage and even or no damage. But I could be wrong. So we'll just have to wait and see in the match and I'll try to talk you through it, what's actually happening. But the, the weird thing with Mana Clash is that it can go on for a very long time. Remember, it only stops if both players um, flip their coins and come up with heads. As long as that doesn't happen, you continue to flip your coins. Or in the case of this game, you continue to roll that six-sided die until one of you is basically dead, right? So Mana Clash can be disastrous for you as a player as well. And that's kind of what I like about this deck. It's really playing with fire. You can get burned. Another card talking about playing with fire uh, in this deck that hurts Steven as well is actually Eternal Flame. One of the better cards in the, the dark format. Two red and two to cast for a sorcery. Eternal Flame does an amount of damage to your opponent equal to the number of mountains you control, but it also does half of that damage to you rounding up. Right, So that can be actually be relevant, that rounding up part. So let's say you've got 11 mountains and you cast an Eternal Flame, then you do 11 damage to your opponent, which is huge, but you also take half of the damage yourself. So 11 divided by 2 comes to 5.5, but you round it upwards, so you actually take 6 damage. One of the things that I find difficult to play against a player with Eternal Flames is that you know the longer the game takes, the stronger his Eternal Flame will get. So you can kind of feel this pressure when you're playing against an opponent with four Eternal Flames. And we're not even done yet with the burn package of this deck. There are also two Infernos in this deck. Inferno is another card that can burn, that can kill yourself, because what it does for two red and four, it's also a sorcery. It deals, no, it's actually an instant. It's an instant, which makes it pretty good. Um, it deals six damage to every creature and every player, right? So that means another six damage to yourself as well. So if you consider all that self-mutilation that's in this deck, all that, you know, burn, that pain that you're giving yourself as well, it makes sense that he's playing with a card called Dark Sphere. He is playing with a full play set of Dark Spheres in this deck. That's something that I am slightly surprised about because it seems a bit much. On the other hand, I'm sure he's play tested it. So I'm curious to see if Dark Sphere 
uh, is going to uh, play a big role in our matchup. Now, Dark Sphere, a card for zero to cast, an artifact, you sacrifice it, and Dark Sphere prevents half the damage done to you by a single source rounded down. Um, now, I also play with Dark Spheres in my sideboard to, um, to have a weapon against these type of decks. So I'm really happy that I'm packing two in my sideboard against the Eternal Flames of Steven. Now, on top of all that direct damage, he's also playing, of course, with four Bull Lightnings. They can be extremely lethal in combination with all that direct damage. And he's playing with Brothers of Fire, which also gives you the uh, opportunity to deal direct damage to your opponent. So, man, um, there's a lot happening. He's also playing with Mace of If, by the way, which is another way to deal direct damage. So, um, Steven, I really like this deck. I like the fact that you've gone all the way like there's no way back when you play with this deck you got to go for the chaos maybe maybe you'll die in the process but that's the play style of this deck so i'm really looking forward to play against it i'm also a little bit a little scared you know i mean four eternal flames all those mana clashes you can deal a lot of damage and it doesn't matter if i have a good blocker or not you don't care because you're going to deal direct damage in this game so that is really cool this is the deck of steven now let's take a look at my deck blue red ghost family and here we see my deck, so Ghost Family. So I'm just going to keep it very brief because um, it's still the same deck, it's the same tournament. So if you want to see an extensive deck tech uh, on this deck, if you want to know what it's all about, uh, the best thing you can do is go back to episode one. There's probably a card appearing right now. Click on there, that will take you to episode one and there you can see the extensive deck tech. For now, um, basically what I did, I chose the colors blue, I chose the colors red uh, because it gives me access to the flyers. You've got ghost ships, you've got fire drake, there are not a lot of flyers in the format. It also gives me access to bull lightning, which I still think is a very strong card in this format. And it gives me access to dance of many, so I can dance of many my bull lightning and I can deal 12 damage and I think that's really cool. Also it allows me to play with a card like electric eel and I just really like that art by Hanson Maddox. So I think, you know, overall for me, this color combination was my chance to play with cards that I really like. I like the way the cards look um, and also make a deck that I think is pretty competitive in this the dark constructed format as well. Now, I was lucky enough to win both of my first matches with 2-1 each. So now this is match number three in the group stages. I am a little... Um, how do you say that? Weary? Weary? Uh, what I'm trying to say is I am a little concerned about all that firepower of my opponent. I mean, Eternal Flames, Mono Red, that can be so deadly. And I don't play a lot of life gain. As a matter of fact, I'm also hurting myself with an Inferno and a Brothers of Fire. So keeping my fingers crossed here that my opponent will not find a lot of Eternal Flames against me and will be unlucky with his mana clashes, right? So it's... For me, this matchup is everybody's game. Let's quickly go to uh, to the uh, the action and see how it's going to end up. Let's go to game one. Game number one. Here we go. My opponent, Steven, on the left. And I'm sitting on the right. It looks like he's still shuffling up. And uh, yeah, this will be interesting to see how it's going to end. It's my first game really against such an aggressive mono red build and it looks like steven has taken a mulligan here putting a card on the bottom so i guess he's starting on six and i'm starting so i'm on the play here playing a basic island and there's a mountain from steven let's see what i can do here and finding a mountain there's my two drop the felwer stone that means that next turn maybe i can play a ghost ship if i can find a second island there's the felwer stone of steven untapping here and playing an island so are we going to see a ghost ship tapping three playing a fire drake and an electric eel now remember the electric eel deals one damage to me when it comes into play and for one red i can give it plus two plus oh or actually for two red i believe and it also deals a damage to me when i do that but then it becomes a 3-1 so i can swing in for a lot more so let's hope for my sake that steven just can't play a blocker because then it can deal some damage here. Although those chances are slim, if he can find a Brothers of Fire, he could kill my uh, Electric Eel next turn. There we see a Sisters of the Flame, so two red and one to cast for a 2-2, and he can tap it for one red mana. There is another island, so I have enough. 
Uh, let's see what I'm doing. Tangle camp uh, kelp on the sisters of the flame. That means it becomes tapped. What I wanted to say is I have enough mana. So that's a good sign. Pumping up my electric eel, dealing four damage here in total. One from the fire drake and three from the electric eel. So he's going to go down to 16. And I'm also going to play a fountain of youth. And the way Tangle Kelp works is it's one blue for an enchant creature. When it comes into play, it taps the creature. And if the creature attacks, it doesn't untap next turn. So it just does untap as normal. But when he decides to attack with it, then next turn it doesn't untap. So you have to wait an extra turn to untap it. So it can really slow down your offenses of your opponent. Let's see what Steven can do. He is, of course, playing with Bull Lightnings as well. If he can just play a Bull Lightning here... That would be, oh, there we see Bull Lightning hitting me here for <laughs> 8 damage. Going down to 10. Um, it does mean that, and you can see me putting a counter on the Tangle Kelp, that next turn the Sisters of the Flame is not going to untap, but who cares. Making a life here with Fountain of Youth going to 11. And this is exactly what Steven wants to do. It's, his deck is very explosive. He just wants to deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. And my deck has to work a little bit more for it. It's a little bit more of a control deck. Again, taking damage here, but I'm hitting him for four. He's going to go down to 12, and I'm passing turn here. I think the Fountain of Youth can maybe kind of buy me some time. So the Sisters of the Flame doesn't untap because he attacked with it prior. Is there another Bull Lightning going down to four here? That means that I'm in Bull Lightning range now. Of course, he's already played two, but if he can find a third one, I'm dead. Or maybe I should just keep... A blocker maybe keep the fire drake and just attack with the electric eel or the other way around there is a safe haven which works pretty good with my bow lightning but as you can see i only have two red so it's hard for me look at that keep my electric eel right now gonna deal two damage so my thought process here is i can make a life with fountain of you climb up to six if my opponent has um a bull lightning, I can block it with the eel. I think the mistake I'm making here is... Ooh, what's that? It's it's a fisher. So I'm going to put my eel in my safe haven. And I wanted to say the mistake I'm making here is forgetting about the Sisters of the Flame that he can, of course, use to attack as well. And making a life going up to four. This is quite an exciting game, actually. My opponent here being on ten... Look at that, sacking the safe haven, really wanting to have that electric eel to block the Sisters of the Flame. And then the question is, am I going to keep two red open to pump? It looks like I found something. There's a ghost ship. That's actually an excellent blocker. That means that I can now attack with both and I could hit him for four if I want to take that risk. Just attacking with one, deciding to keep an extra blocker on hand in case he finds a bull lightning, I guess, or something else. Just don't want to take the risk for that extra damage. My opponent's on eight here. Tapping three. Will there be another bull lightning? Tapping four. No, there will not. There will be something else, I guess. What is he going to play for four here? And I think it's an eternal flame. Oh, that means I'm dead. Oh, I should have kept the mana open for Fountain of Youth. Oh, man. That is uh, amateur hour on my side here. I just wanted to deal that extra damage. I should have kept the two mana open. Uh, of course, he plays with Eternal Flames. So that's definitely a mistake on my part. But now I can sideboard. I'm definitely going to board in those uh, Dark Spheres. So we are going to sideboard and we'll catch up back up with you in game uh, number two. Game number two, and oh, it looks like we've already started. I see Dark Spheres on both sides of the board here, which is pretty funny, this opening. Dark Sphere Artifact for zero, you can tap and sacrifice it, and it halves your damage from one source. Now, of course, I was on the play after losing that game number one. Let's hope I don't see a lot of uh, Bull Lightnings this game, because that was pretty lethal in, uh, in game one in combination with the Eternal Flame. There's red number three. Are we going to see a Bull Light? Yes, Bull Lightning. Oh my goodness. Attacking here. I could sack my Sphere to half the damage. Choosing not to want to kind of keep it around. I am making a mistake here. Look at my life total. It's 19. It should be um, 14. So I need to take away one of those uh, die. And I'm attacking here with my Fire Drake, dealing two damage. So Steven's dropping to 18, playing another Fire Drake. Pretty good opening here for me. Just got to change 
my life totals here to 14 instead of 19, and there seems to be a little bit of a connection issue. Oh, there it is. Steven's back. Okay, that's good news. And he's taking on his turn, untapping with three mountains and having that dark sphere to prevent any unexpected damage. Let's see what he can do. Tapping three again. Another bull lightning. Oh, man. That means I'm going to drop to eight. Really? Or am I going to have the damage now? Or maybe soak it up with the fire drake a little bit? Blocking on the fire drake here. Going to drop to ten. Remember, uh, bull lightning has trample, of course. And fire drake is a one, two. So that means four more damage. So two bull lightnings halved my life total. I'm on ten right now. And I'm not feeling great. Attacking Steven, trying to do my best here. Another bull lightning, bull lightning number three. This is insane. At least I can half the damage here. Gonna drop to seven. Wow, Steven, that's a pretty good draw. On the other hand, he did he doesn't find any more land. So who knows, maybe he ran out of gas. Attacking with one bull lightning, I guess. Yeah, also attacking with the fire drake, dealing eight damage here. Of course, he's got the dark sphere, exactly. Using the dark sphere, halving the damage from the bull lightning. Taking 5 in total, dropping to 11. This is still everybody's game. Although I'm not feeling very secure with 7. I mean, he's not going to find his other ball lightning, right? That would be nuts. What can he do? There is a Sisters of the Flame. Okay. And then I'm, I have a difficult choice. I, I'm actually going to attack here. Going to put him on 9. But that means I'm open playing a Tangle Kelp on the Sisters of the Flame. I think this is a bit of a mistake. Tangle Kelp taps the Sisters of the Flame, but it doesn't stay tapped because it didn't attack. So this Tangle Kelp really doesn't do much for me. So I think I should have kept it on hand. There is a Bone Flute. So we haven't seen Bone Flute yet. I believe it comes from the sideboard. Uh, Steven can... Ooh, what does he do here? He plays a Goblin Rock Slat as well. Goblin Rock Slat, a 3-1 of Trample. That can attack if the opponent has Mountains. Well, I do have Mountains, so that's another problem. And what I wanted to say, Bone Flute... He can tap it and give all the creatures minus one, minus O. Oh, so it's a great way to kind of defend against a lot of creatures. Kind of the swarm tactic that you see in a color like green. There's an attack here. And what am I going to block? Deciding to block the Goblin Rock Sled. Taking two damage from the Sisters of the Flame. I feel I should have taken an extra damage here, maybe? Not sure. Oh, there's an Eternal Flame dropping to one measly life. And I should have been dead, I think. I should have taken the, the trample damage, right? Doesn't it have trample, goblin rock slat? Oh, look at that. Finding a bull lightning. We're both on one. This is an insane game so far. We're both on one life. Oh, man. But I've got nothing on the board. Remember, the Sister of the Flame doesn't untap because of the Tangle Kelp. So uh, we're both on one. I've got one more turn. There's a Mana Clash. This is crazy. Remember, Mana Clash is this card from the dark you got to flip a coin, and if it's heads, you take a damage. If it's tails, or sorry, if it's tails, you take a damage. If it's heads, you don't take a damage. So we're both actually going to flip, but we're not going to flip a coin. We're going to roll uh, a die. So we're going to take our dice here. And what we said is one, two, and three is heads. So that means no damage. Four, five, and six is tails. So let's go. We're going to roll here. And uh, there's the roll. Oh, look at that. I think it's a five. So that means Steven's dead. I've got a six. I'm dead. A draw by Mana Clash. So that, <laughs> that means it's... Oh, man. The funny thing is in this tournament, a draw doesn't count. So we simply have to play the game over again. So one win for Steven and a draw. And we're just going to play, um, I guess, game number three, which is basically game number two, if you can still follow. Wow. What a crazy game. What a crazy game 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 number three so there's a draw and the way this tournament works is every game win is a point so it's not about winning a match it's about how many points can you get a draw just doesn't count at zero points so i've put it here on here but it's not going to matter for the tournament now what's more interesting here is that i didn't take the trample damage from that goblin rock sled so actually steven you've won this game so i apologize I just looked at it, so that was an oversight. And uh, it's difficult in my defense and in Steven's defense. It's difficult uh, because you don't play with Goblin Rock Slut that often with these cards in general. So sometimes you forget a point of damage. Um, and we're just going to throw the dice again to see actually who gets to start because it was a draw. 
And uh, I really enjoy I really enjoy playing against this deck, Steven. It's just a lot of fun. At first I thought, oh, I'm going to play Mono Red. It's just going to be a lot of boring burn. But the burn in the dark is not boring. And I think that makes all the difference. So it's, uh, yeah, it's it's really a fun a fun match so far with the Mana Clash and the Bull Lightnings and Eternal Flames and all that stuff. So uh, I guess I wonder dice roll and starting here with an island passing turn. And wow, there's a one drop. There's a Mana Clash. Okay, <laughs> here we're going to go again. So remember, uh, four, five, and six is damage. Uh, look at that. So I'm taking damage. And it looks like Steven is not. And we're going to roll again. It doesn't stop until we both have uh, heads. I'm taking damage again. And look at that. Steven again, not taking any damage. So one, two, and three is no damage. And four, five, and six is damage there. Okay, well, Steven got some internet issues again, but he's back. So we both have heads right now. That means that the Mana Clash ends. So when you both have heads, it kind of ends. In our case, with rolling the, the dice, it means if we both have one, two, or three, it stops. So I took two damage from the Mana Clash. Steven took zero. So that's not too bad for him for turn one. I mean, he just wants to deal damage, right? There is, I believe that's a Maze of If. Yeah, Maze of If on the side of Steven. Maze of If actually being restricted in this tournament. Tapping four here. Will we see a Ghost Ship? Oh, no, I'm tapping three. There is a Brothers of Fire. Brothers of Fire, pretty good creature from the dark. Two red and one to cast. And for two red and one, it can deal one damage to any target. And also deals one damage to its owner, in this case, to me. So it's one of those cards. It's good, but it, it also burns the owner of the card, so the controller, I should say. Tapping two here, there's that Goblin Rock Sled again. And I'm pointing at my brothers and saying, okay, at least now I can kill it. Maybe Steven doesn't care that, ma that much. What I could do right now is kill the Goblin Rock Sled and attack, but I'm not sure if that's that good of a decision because of that Mace of Hip. So instead I decide to play a Ghost Ship and pass turn here. So Goblin Rock Sled is gonna stay, stick around but I've got that Maze of If. And there is another Sisters of the Flame. Wow, I mean, Steven is not finding the Brothers of Fire, but he's finding a lot of Sisters of the Flame. Attacking here, and he's probably going to use his Maze. So, not a great play. I think I'm making the gesture as well. Oh no, you've got the Maze, I forgot about it. And playing my own Sisters of the Flame. So still deciding to keep the Goblin Rock Slat around. I think what I... No, this probably wouldn't be a good decision. I want to say what I should have done is kill the Rock Slat and attack with the Brothers, but that's not the best. There we see another Brothers of Fire. That's interesting. Remember, when one of us has enough mana to... I'm almost there to deal two damage with the Brothers of Fire. That would be kind of critical. Actually, I can do it with the Sisters of the Flame. Look at that. That's what I'm doing. Pumping six mana... Through my Brothers of Fire, dealing two damage to his Brothers of Fire. It does mean that I take two damage as well. I'm going to drop to 16 here. I'm feeling pretty good with the Maze of If because of all those Bull Lightnings of Steven. So that's good for my confidence. Not so happy with that Maze of If. And what is he going to do? Tapping three here, we see a Fire Drake. One, two flyer that you can give plus one, plus oh with one red, but you can only do that once. So you can make it a two, two at most. And what am I going to do here? I can kill another creature, I guess. I could just pass turn, do it in his end step. I, that's exactly what I'm going to do, passing turn here. The downside, of course, is every time I kill one of his creatures, I'm also hurting myself. And that's exactly what, um, what Steven wants me to do. And I'm actually dealing one damage. Oh, look at this. I'm dealing one damage to Steven and then one gaining one life with the Fountain of Youth. So it's kind of a combo here. So I'm, I'm still on 16. And I've basically just killed this creature for free. So that's a pretty good deal for me. This, this game is three is very, very interesting. Let's see what I can find. And it's, I mean, it's getting pretty complex. I'm just passing turn again. I'm going to wait for the end step. And I have to say, personally, I like decks that, that, that give you a lot of option. And look at that end step. I'm going to deal two damage. And I'm killing the Sisters of the Flame. Kind of want to 
keep his mana base to a minimum. A little bit scared of the Inferno. If he can play an Inferno, I lose three creatures because I don't have three blue open to regenerate my ghost ship. And passing turn, there we see a mana clash. So I guess we're going to clash again. So <laughs> here we go again. So one means heads for me, no damage. And five means a damage here uh, for Steven. And that's it. So wow, that was a pretty lame mana clash. Just a damage for Steven. And I'm also killing his Fire Drake in his end step. So he's now on... I'm on 12, he's on 19, but look at that. All his creatures are gone. I'm playing a Bull Lightning. I'm probably going to attack with... Oh, Dance of Many. This is what I want to do. Only one Maze of If. Going to send back one, the Bull Lightning, I guess. So he's going to take 6, 8, 10, 12 damage. That is huge. That is huge. 12 damage. Now the question is, am I going to untap my Sisters of the Flame? That's what I'm going to do to create a life with my Fountain of Youth. End of turn, of course, the bull lightnings go are destroyed, so they go into the bin. Yeah, oh, this comes a little bit too late here for Steven. That Dark Sphere could have saved him at least three damage. And I'm gonna make a life, gonna climb up to 13. And remember, I've got my Brothers of Fire to deal direct damage to Steven here. And oh, an amnesia for six. Wow, what is he going to discard? Bull Lightning, Eternal Flame, Eternal F no, Brothers of Fire, and two Infernos. This is huge. This is huge. I think this is pretty much game for me here. Probably going to attack with everything I have. He's got one Dark Sphere to have one of my two two attackers that he just takes one damage instead of the full two, but that's not going to matter that much. Going to attack here. Probably going to use his Maze on the ghost ship or maybe the brothers of fire probably not yeah brothers of fire and then gonna deal four damage here he's gonna drop to three i'm not untapping my sisters of the flame want to keep that mace of if open just in case attacking again with everything i have sending the brothers back again i guess and okay, I guess that's it because then I can deal damage with the Brothers of Fire. Of course, I can deal that one damage. So that's it. Wow, winning game number three. So that means we've got a scenario one, one, one. One win for Steven, one draw that actually, Steven, you've won uh, because of that trample damage. And uh, one win for me. So I guess it's now one, one, one. And we're going to go to game number four to see who is going to win this match that actually, Steven, you've already won. Okay, but. Yeah, this is the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So we're going to go to our game number four. I think it would be justice if you would just win this game, Stephen. But um, yeah, let's let's go to our final game and, and find out who's going to win this matchup. Game number four. It really says it right here. One, one, one. One win, one draw, one loss. And who gets to win this match? I think, like I just said, I think it's justice for Steven actually to win it because the draw, again, you should have won it on trample damage with the rock slide, but we'll just have to see how this is going to end up. Remember, when we were playing this game, we didn't know that. We just missed that damage, so we're fully going for it here. It would be justice for Steven to win this one, but, I mean, my deck can be pretty explosive as well. It's really a tight, tight match here, and both players starting here with a basic mountain. And uh, let's see what we can do. There is a Felwer Stone coming from my side of the table here. Three. Is there another Bull Lightning? <laughs> Look at me slamming my hand down. I'm like, what? Another Bull Lightning? Are you kidding me? There's the Mesa Vif. Yeah, potato, potato. Oh, man. That really comes uh, late to the party here. Already taken the six. But at least it's still good because he has three more bull lightnings in there and it can really protect me. So I shouldn't be too unhappy. And there, oh, a Blood Moon. I'm liking this move. So he is playing with Blood Moon. Quite interesting in the format considering Maze of If is restricted. And there is a Mana Clash as well. I was already drawing my card and I was a little bit too quick here. Remember, one, two, and three is no damage and four, five, and six is damage. So I'm taking a damage here. And uh, Steven as well. And he's going to roll the dice also. It's hard to see his dice though. 
It looks like we both had the one, two, or three heads, and that means the Mana Clash ends. Not very spectacular Mana Clashes uh, thus far. Tapping three for my own Ball Lightning here. Remember that Maze of it is a mountain because of the Blood Moon, so he's going to drop to 13 as well. So we're both on 13 here. Taking damage from the Mana Clash and both a Ball Lightning. Another Ball Lightning. Oh, this is just nuts. Wow, and Steven is really lucky with finding those Ball Lightnings. And there seems to be a little connection problem here, so... Just gonna have to wait. I guess I'm just continuing with playing. Okay, okay, here I'm seeing the connection issues. Waiting for my opponent to come back here. Yeah, there he is. And I'm playing, I'm playing a card that's pretty much useless, Barrel's Cage. One of the design mistakes that I made, and sometimes when you're making a deck, certain choices seem logical, but then when you're playing, you're like, why did I do this? I chose Barrel's Cage over Flood, and I think that's a big mistake. I should have played Flood. But anyway, it's Barrel's Cage. Um, it's an artifact. You can pay three, and then target creature doesn't untap in its next untap step, and you can do that multiple times. So every time you pay three, target creature doesn't untap. Now, of course, against the deck of Steven, that's just not going to be very relevant. So maybe I should have boarded it out. There is a Brothers of Fire there staring down at me. Um, I'm looking at my head and my hand a little bit in the tank here. Playing that Tangle Kelp. So now I've got this combo going. I was just saying that Barrel's Cage is useless, but I guess it's not that useless. I, I've got the combo going and I can use my Barrel's Cage now to keep Brothers of Fire tapped. So that's kind of the, the combo. The downside for me here is that Brothers of Fire still works despite the fact that it's tapped. You don't have to tap it to deal one damage for two red and one. He can just do that multiple times. And he's gonna do that, oh, not even twice. He's gonna play an Inferno. And I also had an Inferno, oh man. That is it, getting killed by an Inferno. And I'm showing him my Inferno, I'm saying, Maybe I should have boarded out my Inferno as well. I'm playing a one-off Inferno in my deck, by the way. So this is it, Steven. I think it's justice that you've won um, this game number four. That means you get two points out of this matchup. And I get one point out of the matchup. And here you can see the the cards that we've boarded in. I guess we're showing it now or, or not. Anyway, um, thank you, Steven, very much for this game. I had tons and tons of fun. I actually didn't know that playing against Mono Red Bird could be this much fun. This was really a cool matchup. I'm happy that you've won it because of that draw that you actually should have should have gotten that game. So I'm happy that you've got your point. Uh, very cool deck that you're bringing to the table. For me, Mana Clash is just really fun to play against. It's one of those cards that, of course, I knew it existed. I knew what it did, but you never play against it. So it's really cool to have an opportunity to play against these cool cards. And I guess that's what this the Dark Constructed Tournament is all about, you know, giving cards a chance to shine that normally don't see daylight in old school magic. Can you see what I'm doing here? The Dark, Daylight, are you getting it? Anyway, uh, I would like to thank you very much for watching another episode of Timmy Talks. Let me know what you think of this The Dark Tournament. If you don't like it, be polite about it, but also let me know, just say, man, this is not my thing, so that I know that for the future. Uh, references um, but personally I'm really really digging this the dark tournament next week Tuesday there will be another match coming online this was my third match in the dark tournament this is actually my first loss uh, but remember it's all about the game wins each game win is a point so so far I've, I've gotten five points out of uh, three matches so I'm pretty happy with that so thank you for watching if you want to support the channel, and I'm sure you do if you're watching this, you can do that very simply by leaving a like. Every like helps. It always helps. You can leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the game. Um, you can also um, subscribe, of course. If you're not a subscriber yet, you can also click on the notification bell so you will get notified whenever I post something on the channel. I usually post on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, but sometimes I post in between. And yeah, it's just nice to stay ahead on things and be the first one to be notified when I post new content. Also, again, you're helping the channel grow by clicking the notification bell because YouTube will be like, oh, people find the channel important. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna put it higher in search results and so forth. You know, so all that helps and it's all free. You don't have to pay anything for it. Talking about paying, you can actually sponsor the channel. You can become a patron of Timmy Talks and you can do that by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. 
go to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and check out how you can support what I do here. You can already do that starting at a dollar a month. Talking about all the supporters, let's take a look at all the fantastic, crazy, amazing patrons and cello members of Timmy Talks. Somebody can see.